Hey everyone, I'm here with Chris Stiles, VP of Supply Chain at Nissan North America here at Finnish Vehicle Logistics. Uh, Chris, great to have you here talking vehicle distribution with us. You have responsibility across the broad spectrum of Nissan supply right. chain across North America. Of course, vehicle logistics is one part of that, but talk to us about how much of a priority has that become in the last months? Uh, I would say more than months, actually. It's probably in the last year to two years. Um, the vehicle logistics side really is taking kind of the forefront as far as you know prioritization within the company as far as really trying to make sure that we 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 still deliver to meet the customer experiences we still deliver the quality but obviously with all the challenges um, from the the parts supply side and the and the production side it's really um, put more emphasis on okay what can we do once we do have a good finished product get it to the dealer so a lot more around working closely with all of our logistics partners and really trying to at least optimize what we can and deal with the surprises as they come. So, what, One of the things we're talking about across this event, of course, is that vehicles are now being sold from the pipeline, often before they're even built. So how is this sort of management of the pipeline affecting the way you manage vehicle logistics? Well, I mean, you're, you're right. Uh, pretty much 100% of the vehicles are sold before we build them, right? So it's we call it take rates. and. Uh, we, we measure it every month on, okay, all the units that we're gonna produce, how many are sold? They're all sold. So what that boils down to is then once we've got them, once they're produced and they're ready to go, making sure that the dealers get some level of better visibility on when they're gonna arrive because there is a customer waiting on that vehicle at the end of the line. So really making sure that the, that the dealers can give the customers very accurate delivery dates, very accurate timing so that the expectations are met versus maybe expectations that, that, that would continue to change. So really trying to be more consistent on that side. And again, one of the things that keeps coming up is the importance of ETA accuracy updates, not just in the for logistics providers, but also for dealers and customers. Uh, has Nissan taken some specific initiatives to improve? Its yeah, yeah, yes, we're, we're, we're obviously looking at different technologies on, on what can we do from a visibility standpoint, tracking, forecasting, predicting on, on when a vehicle will actually arrive. Uh, the window used to be you know within a week now it's down to we can narrow it as it gets closer to, to specific dates days and uh, really trying to see what other technologies that we can use to help enhance it as we as we keep moving forward whether it's you know outsourced technologies the telematics evolution that's coming is going to help us um, really with with what we can actually do inside the vehicle to help track it and then therefore create all the visibility and, the, and really kind of the, the predictability of when a vehicle is going to arrive based on how it's moving within the network. Something you and I have discussed before is how the supply chain can further influence decisions that the company is making, be they manufacturing, sourcing. Do you see this flip on the vehicle logistics side also playing a bigger role absolutely. in decisions? Ab absolutely. We, we, we've definitely got the ear of the highest levels of the company when it comes to what can we do to further enhance our, our, our capabilities from a vehicle logistics standpoint. Um, really, really just trying to hone in on what's gonna work best for Nissan. And then we've got the support and, and really from all levels, whether it's within the region or even, even globally on what is it that's gonna work, what's the investment if needed, and then how do we take that forward and do it quickly. So it's a, there's a lot of discussion. Yeah. And finally, look, looking ahead, of course, electrification, already a part of Nissan's production mix. Announcement have come to, to increase this substantially. What does the vehicle logistics industry need to do to prepare now for this change which is coming over the next decade? Well, well obviously with those types of vehicles, the specifications are different, the weights are different, so there's going to have to be a lot of understanding on what are any limitations that come along with the, those types of vehicles from, you know, from a weight standpoint, what's our capacity, what's our load factor. Um, and working with the carriers on how do we how do we optimize to the point we can within the regulations that are out there and, and really try to look at okay here's our current limitations now do we need to take it further and really try to talk legislatively or other ways to is there something else that needs to be done to help enhance kind of the, the overall productivity of the network because there's driver shortages and there's equipment shortages so we still need to be able to maximize the capacity 
of what we can ship. So that's that's going to be a lot of the focus for the next few years. So it's not it's not necessarily a new focus, but it changes its dimensions and aspect literally with yeah. the change of vehicles. Chris, thanks so much for talking to us about us. Thank you again for joining us as My Finnish pleasure. Vehicle Logistics as it's an important time for the sector. Thanks to all of you. Keep following us on LinkedIn for more updates from the conference and automotive logistics.media. Christopher Ludwig signing off here from Huntington Beach. Thank you.